Watch you guys, got another video here for you. Now when it comes to removing malware, Trojans, root kits, ransomware, boot kits, anything like that from the system, there's not many better companies than ESET. Now ESET have been around a long time and they've got a tool here called ESET Sys Rescue Live. It's a free tool that you can download to help you remove malware from a computer system. Now if your system is not booting, you can boot up to this uh, Sys Rescue Live disk and it will help you remove malware from the system. Now the beauty of it is it's also got a team viewer part in it which is built into it. Now what you can do with that is you can get the person you're trying to remote into if the, as long as they've got another computer they can download this create the USB flash drive or the CD and then boot up to that on the infected machine and then remote in that way. So it's a great tool for helping people out that way. Let's uh, show you how to set this up and then we'll have a look at the actual program itself. It's going to hit the download button here. Now what you need to do here is select whether you want the ISO image. If you're comfortable in burning ISO images then you can click this. But if you want the uh, creator for Microsoft Windows 8.1, 8.7, Vista or XP then you need to click on this one. It will automatically uh, select your language but if you want to change that you can do. Now you hit the download button and this will download a program of about 8.9 megabytes in size. Once we've got this downloaded, I'm just going to drag this onto my desktop. Okay, that's the program there. Now you're going to need either a CD, a blank CD, or a USB flash drive. Now I've got a 4 gigabyte USB flash drive here. There's no reason not to have these anymore. They're so cheap and you should have a bunch of them lying around just in case you want to uh, do these types of jobs. So it's on our F drive here. I'm going to fire up ESET's Sys Rescue Live. Now what it's going to ask you to do is whether you want to use your previously downloaded ISO file. Now we haven't done this so we're going to leave that. Now if you did do that you can actually put the tick in there and use that. Now what you've got here is two choices, create a USB flash drive or create a CD or DVD. Now as long as you've got one of these items you should be good to go. We're going to be using the create USB flash drive. Click on that and it should automatically detect your flash drive. Make sure you check the actual drive letter in case you've got other USB devices on there and you've selected the right one. Also down here in red writing make sure that you've backed up all the data on that flash drive because it will be formatted and there'll be nothing left okay and you will lose all your data so we're just going to click on this and then create usb flash drive it'll give you another warning to make sure that you've uh, backed up all your data because it's going to format that drive we're going to say yes to this and let it create that drive for us now it's going to download the actual iso file now this part would be skipped if you have already had the ISO file but we haven't it's now going to download that then unpack it and then put it onto our USB flash drive okay that's now copied across as you can see now you can save the ISO file at this stage if you want to by clicking on the save ISO file but basically that's all done so all we need to do here now is close this off and if we look at our drive here we should have all our files inside here, okay? So what we want to do next is leave the actual uh, USB flash drive in the in the actual uh, USB port or the CD in the DVD-ROM drive and then you want to reboot the system and change the boot order in your BIOS to boot to either CD or USB flash drive. So let's reboot our system and then we're going to boot up to our USB flash drive. Okay so if you have uh, changed your boot order correctly you will now be seeing this ESET Sys Rescue. That means you've successfully changed your boot order and now you've got to this stage. Now if you haven't got to this stage and you don't know how to change your boot order then you can always go over to my website uh, and I'll leave the link in the description of this video which will tell you how to change your uh, BIOS to change the boot order there okay anyway what we're going to do is crack on here and hit the run ESET sys rescue
Now this will take a bit of time to boot up once it's booted up. As a matter of fact, that's pretty quick. Now once we get to this area, it will ask us to agree to some uh, terms here. And then we can read, uh, read this if you wish. And also you need to accept the live grid or disable or enable the live grid. Now if you enable the live grid, what that's going to do you can see the information here. This is going to allow you to submit files to there um, for, for analysis and stuff. So if you don't know what that file is and you're a bit dubious about it, you don't, have, you don't have to delete it. You can always submit it to them and they will analyze it for you. A little bit like virus total. Now also you've got your enable potentially unwanted applications. This is another area. You can read the information below. It tells you exactly what it does there. Okay, But basically you can enable or disable these. I'm going to accept that. Now straight away you can see home and it gives you the version and virus signature database what you're using. I would advise you to go straight to the update area and click on the update button there and you want to make sure that you're getting all the latest virus definitions uh, so you will be protected and also you can remove all the latest malware that may be available because some of the new malware stuff may not, if you're using an old version, it may not detect all the new stuff and it will just skip straight over it. So now you can see it's downloading all the latest uh, virus signature database from their server. It doesn't take that long. It'll go through a stage of one to nine and it's very, very quick. Unlike some other rescue CDs, that does take a long time to do. This seems to be very quick at updating. So there you can see now we've got our update done. That's the important part. So let's go on to the on-demand scan. So we've got two options here, nice and simple, smart scan. Smart scan in a nutshell is basically going to do a real quick scan of the system of certain files, uh, certain folders on your drive. It may be uh, particular common areas that malware resides. Okay, It will go in there and scan that folder and it will find all the malware. Now normally roaming and places like that where all these malware get dropped into program data, I should imagine it's going to be scanning those types of areas, Windows directories and stuff like that. Okay. Now that is not an in-depth scan. What that's going to do is scan a very quick scan of certain common areas where malware uh, hides and then it will detect that sort of malware. Now you can set this up to do an in-depth scan if you wish and you can do that in the scan setup click on that and this will give you your option so if you want to set this up you can set this up now and uh, you can then come into the setup area here you can see this scan profile is smart scan you can change this to that if you wish and then change the setup area here this gives you some more options objects it wants to tell you whether it wants to uh, scan the mailboxes I would suggest you do that uh, just in case you've got uh, dodgy stuff in there that's been coming down, ransomware and stuff like that, it will also scan that area if you wish. Um, but you've got other options here as well, potentially unsafe applications, you can now, uh, enable that. Now bearing in mind that depending on how big your mailbox is and how big uh, your, drive, your drive is, it's going to depend on the amount of time it takes to scan uh, that drive for you. So you've got cleaning here. Now also this is a not cleaning uh, process. This is just basically going to scan the system and let you know what's on there. Okay, It won't do anything. The next bit will uh, nag you and basically say uh, do you want to delete this file and you can then choose whether you want to delete it or not. The strict part is like a stealth. It will just run through and uh, scan files, find them and then delete them. It won't ask you. Okay. You can read all the information under here. It's going to give you a better uh, description than what I'm actually telling you here. So here we have some other tabs here. You can read through and look at if you wish. Okay. But we're just going to leave these parts out for this video. But I mean, pretty much I don't normally touch this area. But you can see it's uh, extensions and you can add an in here define a list of file extensions to be excluded so if you've got a folder with all your work in it basically you could add that in here and it will miss that folder out for you in case you didn't want it in case it deleted that file or folder in there which is work related or stuff important 
So once you've done that, you can then come down to the scan targets area and the scan targets area is going to tell it basically where you want it to scan so you're in control and you can say I don't want you to scan this I don't want you to scan that this is my partition with all my stuff on it I don't want you to scan that area that's safe I just want you to concentrate on the Windows Drive and you can do that all here okay so what else does this have to offer well, let's have a look at the tools area here. You've got your log files, show your log files. You can have a route through those log files, which are very, very important. A lot of people just delete them, but you should keep these and show them to a technician if you've been working on that machine uh, yourself. And if you can't do it, you can always keep these log files and show the technician what you've done, and that will help him no end, okay? Protection uh, statistics. Again, you can have a look at this area here, It'll show all. You've got your quarantine area. This is going to show you all your quarantine files, all the files that it's detected as viruses. Now, remember, some of these are not viruses. They may be false positives, and you can remove them and keep them as safe files. So, again, submit to a file for analysis. This is another area, a little bit like virus total. It's a nice little feature. You can browse to a file and uh, up, uh, submit it to there, and it will tell you whether it's suspicious or not okay. Let's close this off. Another great feature with uh, ESET's SysRescue is, is this uh, Team Viewer. Now, I've done a video on this before um, option. It's a great option if you're trying to help someone that's got a non-bootable computer and they have a second computer where they can create this live CD. And then once they boot to this live CD on the infected computer, they can then give you some details so you can remote in and still remove it. That is an awesome feature for technicians that like to still remote support in and help people. Now, obviously, there's a bit of a palaver in setting it up because they have to have a second computer to build this or they could have it already. And uh, if you are a PC tech, you can already have this set up for them um, and give them a, a USB flash drive with it already installed on there and that will allow you to remote in if they've got a non-bootable computer and a, a great feature and as a tech uh, it's going to help you out no end. So there you can see there we've got some uh, other options here to create your own uh, rescue stuff we've done all that in in the beginning of video the user user guide here is an awesome little uh, part that's added to it you can see it helps you with a great detail tells you exactly what to do you can just read through this stuff here okay and you've you've got the zoom button here that lets you zoom in so you can see the document more clearly you just zoom in like so so you can read what it means again you've got some great uh, features here that you can use like team viewer um, bomgar you can read through this stuff this will help you out so it's really useful you haven't got to leave this area you can use it right here so that's a nice little touch from ESET again uh, we've got the support area ESET support and we've also got computer you can come in here and uh, you can have a look at you can browse the internet and stuff like that if you wish you've got the Chrome down here we just uh, click on that again you can access the internet from here Okay, so there you can see we're on the United Kingdom and there you are straight on the internet and you can go to their site and get all tools and stuff that they've got on there. They've got loads of stuff on ESET's website. Okay, so I think I'm going to wrap this one up. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. If you enjoy these videos, then hit the like button, guys. It really does help me out. And also hit the subscribe button if you want to keep up to date and notified when I upload new videos. Now, if you've got problems with your computer or troubles with your computer or anything like that and you don't know how to fix them, then uh, head over to my forums and uh, join the community over there and post on there, and I'm pretty sure that we'll get you back up and running free of charge. So what you got to lose? Anyway, have a nice weekend, guys, and I shall see you again in the next video. Thanks again for watching, and thanks for the uh, support. Bye for now.